as kids, we grew up in Belfast, you know, re- relatively suburban, relatively high up, and so we were able to look over the city. And I, I guess we were lucky that it didn't feel that, um, you know, there was literally trouble in our street. But you know, you could look out at the troubles um, unfolding over the city and and through the news. And I suppose there's a gradual. Uh, estrangement from things that are happening and things that are happening politically and then really uh, when I was 18 like lots of others I couldn't wait to get out so I went to uh, went to art college in England um, but did have a sense of uh, really a, a society not working and you know beginning to doubt properly things that one would have been told or a kind of a sort a sort of socialization in the way that one would have been brought up, which wasn't particularly partial, but neither was it neutral, you know. So, um, I think, uh, you know, if you're if you're interested in questioning at all, then these things become part of your um, environment. So, by going to England and going to another environment, you you at least had some other kind of m- measure in the narrative that one develops about what's happening around you. These processes. Um, of trouble and so forth all seemed all seemed linked to ideas of authority and governance and power and money um, so I, I didn't I didn't think the troubles themselves were an isolated phenomenon that was purely a religious war I thought that was a convenient way of discussing it where other more fundamental uh, ideas of society um, you know that those had to be included, or it didn't it really didn't make any sense. You know. So I was interested that it had sense rather than being absolutely senseless. Spent a bit of time in America, and really, in the end, didn't know what I was doing there because I wanted to be here. So a constant or a, or a particular decision to come back, and so the work that's in the exhibition. Um, arose out of a particular reflection around the time of the hunger strikes. Um, so I was in Ireland at that time. That had seemed really particularly convulsive. Um, and it seemed to me that there was no room to find a position that wasn't one of the binary uh, positions. So I'd been really um, curious to try to cite work in these difficult uh, spaces. And this work, in fact, was made in Rome. So I'd been making bodies of work that were trying to kind of uh, articulate social matters here. And I was interested in ways that that had been done visually through mural culture and others where there was a sort of a a visual spectacle taking place. I'm not sure that I was, I'm not sure that I was, you know, not, not outwardly sympathetic to, you know, the fairly abrupt messages that the murals were carrying. But I thought the way in which they... Um, were delivering those messages to a local public and to a an international public, um, you know, initially of journalists and now of tourists, of course. That actually, um, you know, this this sophistication about using the camera as a way of uh, of distributing ideas that didn't require an art infrastructure. I thought that was a real sophistication about the development of a of a of a media war, or at least that's that was one of the sites of contest. So I went to Rome, and I was interested then in Rome that that was a site of monumental, uh, monumental culture. You know, the foundation of, uh, of 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 empire really. And so, since one was at the other end of empire here, you could feel, you know, you could you could read the language clearly and particularly. So this work then with um, um, with Bobby Sands in Rome. Um, and another companion work with Antonio Gramsci, the Italian Western communist, um, evolved as a way of trying to understand how republican and communist culture um, was monumentalized or could find a a place uh, within culture. Um, and so the work had been an effort to try to um, explore that. I think also, though, the use of that image of Bobby Sands, that familiar pixelized image. I mean that was that was an image distributed to the media and it was the only image distributed. So um, 
you know, there was a sophistication again about a control of who this uh, who this image was for and um, the way in which it would be consumed. So in a sense, this image had been picked up as a piece of public property because it had, it had existed in the media and in terms of the way the work is articulating itself, um, it's about using that iconic pixelized image as a way of discussing, I think, something human and um, a perspective in relation to that. So I'm interested that it's lasted this long, I'm interested that it changes meaning. I mean, I think meanings of things aren't static. I think meanings change in terms of uh, their context or how or if they're collected or those kinds of things. So I guess with the Bobby Sands work, it was certainly it was brought back here. The fragments were bought quickly by the art, the art council. That gave me some money to make the next work. Um, and I guess it's one of those works that's in a public collection, and and when it comes out, you know, you're you're reasonably glad about that because it's I think it's a decent work. You know, I mean, I, th I think all artists make work that are that are variable and um, good to have a good one in a public collection, <laughs> as opposed to a, a a bad one. You know, but I I also think that because that's publicly been collected, it's also a work that has become a little bit associated with what I do, you know, um, more than more than other works. So just in you know, interested in how that how that how that happens. I thought it was a I thought it was a visual contest here, do you know, I thought things were happening in, in society, uh, and I think things were happening on all sorts of material and visual and architectural levels. And I thought it was a contest. I th I thought that unless visually you could make things that had a certain kind of visual power, um, sometimes spectacle, but a certain kind of visual thing that made you want to look at them, then they would be ignored amongst everything else that was calling for attention. And I still think that's true for me, by the way. I don't don't think it, it's true or necessary for lots of other artists, but it's too, true for me in terms of the, you know, uh, this becoming a late capitalist culture where the call for visual attention is everywhere in terms of consumption. So for me, I still think it's a form of visual contest. So the things were moving and made sound because I... Th because I wanted people to look, uh, in a sense it's as basic as that, because if I thought that they weren't looking, then nothing was being communicated much. Um, and that might be back to thinking about those sense of how murals, whatever they're do, they do, they're, they're compulsive things to want to look at. Do you know? So, tricky to make more nuanced things compulsive to look at. Do you know things that are nuanced or aren't particularly clear or or complex? But I think that's the challenge, isn't it?